is disgusting. I really think you're a traitor to your own, and I will never be able to agree with you. You're a human life, and you have the right to not be killed. When life begins, it's simply and that inaccurate. Is... Sim it's simply inaccurate. Understanding your organization supports abortion up until the moment of birth. In this video, we are going to watch a debate between pro-life activist Lila Rose and basically the rest of the Dr. Phil studio. Whatever your position on this matter, it's a fantastic chance to actually learn from Lila. She shows some fantastic composure, body language, and persuasive skills, which I'm going to break down in detail and which you you will certainly be able to implement into your own skill set. Meanwhile, there are also some amazing examples of what not to do. So just a bit of context before we get into the next clip, they played a video before they went to Lila of a couple whose baby developed a rare disease called a crania whilst in the womb, which meant that the baby's skull actually doesn't develop and either the baby would be a stillborn or it would die soon after birth. Lila, what do you think? You, you don't think Nancy should have been able to have an abortion? I mean, Nancy, my heart broke when I heard your story because that's the worst thing any mom wants to hear is that their baby is gonna die, their baby has a life-threatening illness. Um, my, my husband and I, we had a miscarriage about two years ago. They were some of the darkest days of my life. And they were dark days because it was our child. You know, we knew this was a baby. And I think that's the fundamental point here is that this, we're talking about a baby, we're talking about a human life. And the pro-life position is that all humans have human rights. And the first right is life, to not be killed, you know, from the moment of fertilization until natural death. And so, you know, Nancy, you deserve better. You deserve better health care. There's perinatal hospice, there's palliative care, so that your baby could be, could die in the loving arms of their, of their parents instead of at the abortionist tools. Okay, I, I've got some questions for you about that. Okay, so obviously this is a very emotional and heated topic and it's not an easy one to debate. So with that, notice that the first thing Lila does here is to build rapport. She instantly comes from a place of deep sincerity and empathy and says, we are both mothers. My heart broke for you when I heard your story and then told her own story of her miscarriage. And rather than following that up with a, you did the wrong thing, she says, you deserve better. And here are the options options that could have been available to you. This way, she's not coming from a place of judgment and waving the finger at the mother, who's obviously been through an incredibly traumatic ordeal, but rather she's absolving her of guilt and shame and talking to her eye to eye. Oftentimes with these debates, people are very quick to assign evil to the other side because you're talking about life and death and you're talking about people's bodily autonomy. And it can be very difficult to remove yourself from the situation emotionally and see the humanity in the other person. But Lila does a magnificent magnificent job of disarming the people that she's speaking to and coming from a place of empathy. And the next part here is even more impressive when Lila is confronted by the opposite of herself. But just before we get there, guys, I do hope you take a second to like this video. Help me with my algorithms. If you enjoy this sort of content, if you like seeing debates broken down as sport, body language, and all of that cool stuff. And also, obviously, if you haven't already, make sure to be subscribed to the channel. Back to the clips. I, I see a lot of my audience wiggling in their chairs. Uh, if you've got something to say, raise your hand. Great, and... I do. I have lots to say, actually. A ton to say, actually. Um, okay. I would say, though, in this particular case with Nancy, who I feel absolutely terrible for, Lila, I really feel like your views, you just want to legislate evil. That's really how it feels when I hear you speak, especially when you're talking about a 10-year-old girl who was raped. I'm sorry. And... Um, to hear you say that, you know, they should just have it anyway is disgusting. I really think you're a traitor to your own, and I will never be able to agree with you. There's nothing you could justify to say that she should have to carry it to bury it. There is nothing you could possibly say to justify that level of lack of empathy. And that's the problem I feel like in this country at the moment. We were founded on the lack of empathy, and we just kept up with that tradition. If, if you have no empathy. A, abortion is devastating for, to women's mental health. No one talks about that. The year after a woman has you an know abortion. It's really like the, the year after a woman to have the child. They, what kind of trauma is the that? Trauma that is from the, on somebody? the trauma is from the rape. The child's an innocent party there. The child and is we don't born take out yet. It's not there. We, we should not take out generational sin on a child to say there's generational sin and that dad was but an abuser the so the child should be killed. At this That's rate. not We're fair to the child. We're talking about rights. And he just yes. said we've been taken, a right has been taken away from us. And what is next? I want to address that because our fundamental human right that we all share in this room is life. It's the first human right. Laws are meant to protect the weak. In a society, who's the weakest? 
Who's the weakest in the society? A child. Of course. They don't have a voice. They can't speak. A child in the room. That's or a weak. But a poor child would be the weakest. And we're going to keep them that way by and making a, and a child them with disability. Listen, kids. whether you live 10 minutes or 10 years or 100 years, you're a human life, and you have the right to not be killed. And that's what the pro-life fight is all about. That's what we're fighting for, a culture of life where we provide real health care. You know, abortion is the intentional destruction of an innocent but human doesn't life. A woman we can have do a better right than that. that for a right to choose what? what a right to choose what? Doesn't a woman have a right to do? choose what happens to her body? But what's in her body? There's another you life know, we're talking about. Let's acknowledge the science. And I would defer to Christian and the experts, but I will say this. You can't just be pro-fetus and not pro-life. Right. Because both, a lot of times we're, we're, we're pro-human pro beings. No, we're pro-human beings. After, and women after, deserve after a lot of these abortion. children are born, we all those better. legislators who vote for pro-life when the baby's inside the woman, then do, do nothing to vote to help them with not, health I mean, care, uh, after school care, uh, you know, yeah, gay it, care, all these things, especially in marginalized communities. Okay, so this lady comes out straight away and goes into a tirade of character attacks. She says, you want to legislate evil. What you said is disgusting. You are a traitor to your own or the sisterhood uberalis. You have no empathy and there is nothing you could ever say to justify your position. She doesn't make any logical or intelligent arguments. She just says that the right has been taken away and the baby hasn't been born, so it isn't there. Her words, not mine. Ladies and gentlemen, I could not find a better example of how not to engage with your fellow human being. Even if this is a heartless, ideologically twisted and evil human being, if your goal is to win friends and influence enemies, Literally nothing good will ever come out of that. Now let's compare the difference in body language and demeanor here. And the difference is night and day. Notice here first how this lady has her hands together in the praying position, but she's certainly not saying a prayer. This, similarly to having your arms folded in a conversational setting, signifies that you're closing yourself off to ideas. You're actually physically closing yourself off. And it also is a very combative stance. It signifies that you're protecting yourself from something or someone, and you're actually creating somewhat of a shield. Lila, however, uses very warm and giving body language, opening herself up and signifying the opposite, that she's open to ideas, she's open to conversation, and she's receptive to the person that she's speaking to. Moreover, she once again builds rapport, but this time she does it by engaging the audience, who, judging by the fact that they were clapping for that other lady, are largely against Lila. And building rapport, guys, is so important, but a very subtle art. And the way you normally do it is to find some sort of common ground with this person you're speaking to and to express that and make sure you're both aware of it. In this case, she says, our fundamental right that we all share as human beings is the right to life, whilst engaging the audience and scanning with her eyes. The fundamental human right that we all share in this room is life. It's the first human right. And whilst she does this, her body language is very giving and very welcoming and warm. Importantly, her palms are up, which means that she's saying, my hands are clean, I have nothing to hide. It's a very vulnerable and non-aggressive type of body language. And it suggests to the person that you're speaking to that we are allies, not foes. Also, when you use this body language, when making a point, it suggests that you're offering them a gift. Now, picture her doing the same thing, but this time with her palms down, as if she has something to hide under her hands. And then picture her saying the same thing, but wagging her finger at the audience. Or like the lady was doing before, doing the A-OK -okay sign and saying, I know what I'm talking about and I'm telling you X and Y. Those gestures do have their place, however, and palms up can also be very submissive. So it's not always ideal when you're trying to stand your ground, but in this case, it was perfect. And lastly, she does really well to not be thrown off by the constant interjections and objections being thrown her way. She holds a nice vocal cadence and basically weathers the storm until her opponent pretty much wears herself out. Now, let's have a look at an exchange between Dr. Phil and Lila that is quite telling. No one here is pro death and no one here is pro-abortion the difference is pro-choice and pro-life Lila you, you say some things in the predicate of your positions that life begins at fertilization that science is very clear about that and you, you have to know science isn't there's no consensus among the scientific community. There is, that, Dr. Phil. 96% no, of scientists not. say that I, life begins at fertilization. If no, you're an in vitro specialist, well, no, you're let, looking to create let, let me, let me a single cell embryo, and then you know you have a new human life. 
So it, it is a scientific fact. Well, actually, it's not. Well, when do you when do you say human life begins then? There's well, it's, it doesn't matter what I think. I I, I don't care what I think. What I'm saying is well, the scientific is community does not have a consensus about when life begins. It's simply and that inaccurate. Is, You're sim it's simply inaccurate. That's not true. You can go to the body A single of, cell embryo is a unique new human life. You can go to the body of scientific literature and you can find neuroscientists who say that it begins when there is a detectable brain wave. But Dr. Phil, in to... an abortion, if it's not a human life, why do you have to kill it? I haven't spoken over you and you keep speaking over me and I assume that's because you don't want me to finish my thought, which is if anyone here wants to fact check me instead of speak over me, you can go to the scientific literature and query what the definition is of the beginning of life and you will find that there are different definitions and it's up to you to decide what you think but there is not a consensus among the scientific community and it has actually evolved across time before we had sonograms uh, it was a black box what was going on in there then when we got to the point we had sonograms and we could see oh you can detect a heartbeat okay now uh, up until then, it was referred to as quickening, uh, when you could feel the kick. Uh, that was the beginning of life, and then we got better technology, and then uh, it started to change. But you say it's at fertilization, but at fertilization, there actually hasn't been implantation. And then once there's implantation, then it, it, this is a process, and uh, it's... All I'm saying is there's not a consensus, and you're saying there is, and that's factually inaccurate. We can we can agree to disagree, but I will say, you know, when I was but pregnant... But the literature with, doesn't disagree. Well, we can... I, we should look it up. It's 96% of scientists have agreed when surveyed. But regardless of that point, I think the question is, you know, we know deep down when you're pregnant, there's a new human life. You know, that's why it's so devastating for Nancy. Our miscarriage was so devastating. We all know that deep down, these are these are human beings. That's why it's so contentious. Mm. And listen, we, do we acknowledge that all humans have human rights? Because I think what your your question well, is I, about I, is I about personhood. I agree with a lot of your points. I'm just I, saying it comes down to when that life begins. But I, that, I don't that's think Nancy saying. or others here are saying okay, they're not human beings. Wow. Phil really did not want to engage with Lila there. And I can understand not wanting to be talked over and maybe Lila was a little bit overzealous there at times. But if you're the host of the show, you're meant to let your guests air out their positions. And also, if you're taking a few minutes to labor through a point at a snail's pace, come on, Phil. Almost like he was killing time a little bit so that Lila couldn't come in there. But Phil seems to think there that the audience should make up their own mind about this scientific fact because they will be able to find people who have different opinions about the matter. And I see what he means there in terms of the fact that it's important to research both sides. But his argument is infallible by no means. You can go out there and you can find people who genuinely think that Australia does not exist. Australia is real. No, it's not. It's not real. It's a fantasy. Or you can find so-called experts that think that the Earth is in fact flat. Yesterday, the sun and the moon was in the sky here at the same time, which is not possible, in my belief, on a globe. Should we defer to the viewer's discretion about that one or should we just take a definitive stance? And Lila is actually referring to hard science there. She's referring to a very comprehensive study done showing that the vast majority of biologists believe that life begins at conception. Steve Jacobs began the study as part of his dissertation for his PhD at the University of Chicago's Department of Comparative Human Development. In a recent article he published in Colette, Jacobs revealed his findings. He also relayed the backlash he's received from pro-abortion advocates after publishing his study. In his study, he quote, emailed surveys to professors in the biology departments of over 1,000 institutions around the world. The results determined that the vast majority of biologists believe that life begins at conception. Jacobs writes, 
quote, I found that 5,337 biologists, 96%, affirmed that a human life begins at fertilization, with 244% rejecting that view. This finding is even more stunning since the vast majority of biologists surveyed were liberal pro-choice and non-religious. The majority of the sample identified as liberal, 89%, pro-choice, 85%, and non-religious, 63%. In the case of Americans who expressed party preference, the majority identified as Democrats, 92%. But in Phil's defense, I mean, it's 2023, and what is biology anymore? I mean, that doesn't even really exist, so what the heck. Now in this last section, Lila, presses this Christian Nunes lady on her organization, the National Organization for Women, and their stance on abortion. This is extremely telling. And this is where, from a pro-choice standpoint, we're saying it is not for us to decide for anyone what they believe, how they believe, but they, they have options. So I think we need to really pay attention to what pro-choice is really arguing, and what we're really talking about. It's about truly, if we are giving people the right to choose, we're allowing them to make the best decisions for themselves, for their bodies, and for their families. And okay, uh Imagine a world where everything is becoming more and more digitalized by the day. Where big corporations are acquiring and selling your data and sharing them with government agencies. Whilst hackers from around the world try and steal your personal information. Oh yeah, that's exactly the world we live in. Guys, nowadays it is more important than ever to protect yourself online. And that's why I use the best VPN on the market. Private Internet Access VPN. VPN stands for virtual private network and it gives you the option to hide your IP address and it encrypts the connection between your device and whatever network you're using hiding your valuable and private information guys I travel the world a lot and private internet access VPN has been so handy for me whether that be chat GPT being banned in Italy content from major streaming platforms being restricted in certain places or having to use dodgy Wi-Fi networks in strange places so solves all of my browsing security and censorship issues. And they've got a no log policy, which they've defended in court multiple times, which means that they do not store or share any of your data. And one of the best parts is that one PIA membership will protect an unlimited amount of devices, whether that be at your home or in the office, and is available on all platforms, whether that be Windows, Mac, Android and more. And just as a cherry on the cake, guys, if you use my link in the bio, you get a whopping 83% off, meaning that it'll be only $2.03 a month for your membership for the first 12 months, and you'll get four months for free. So be sure to hit the link in the bio and take them up on this amazing offer. And thank you so much to Private Internet Access VPN for sponsoring this video. You were wanting to say something right before we went to break. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Dr. Phil. Two, two quick things, and I'm so glad we're having this conversation. Um, the first thing is this. Abortion advocates have decided when life begins in their book. It's at birth. They say before birth, it's not a child, doesn't have human rights, can be killed at will for any reason, and then after birth, it magically becomes a human. That's not logical. That's not scientific. We know that human life begins before birth. It doesn't begin at birth. So that's the first thing. The second thing is a question for you, Christian, would be this. You know, the National Organization for Women, my understanding, your organization, supports abortion up until the moment of birth for any reason, taxpayer funded. Is that your position? Well, we believe people have a right to choose. Up so until the moment of birth for any reason. It's not for our organization or myself or anyone else or advocate to determine where they determine that point is for them and regarding the gestational age of when they seek an ab abortion care. So it's very important to point that out. And as for regarding funding sources, right now there is a Hyde Amendment that's in place and the Hyde Amendment only provides Medicaid funding for abortions under extreme circumstances, incest rape and some very few medical um, issues where it's concerning for the life woman or the fetus. It's a financial cost on the person who is choosing to move forward their planning and what they do. It is not covered a lot of times under federal funding. Yeah. Taxpayers but are not always paying for it. Just to clarify, you taxpayers should... sometimes pay for it? It what, does. Under, in California, under it does. Part of, yeah, under, does. depends on the and state, but has some states do have where they use their funds for the state. But, but to just cover. to clarify, this is a really uh, important point. The abortion position, the position of now your organization, is abortion up until the moment for, of birth for any reason. 
It's an extreme, extraordinary position, and that's built on this idea of dehumanizing the child in the womb, which is what the abortion position has done. It's saying they're not a human. If they're conceived in violence, if they have a disability, if they're really sick, kill them. That's the abortion position. And the pro-life position is so saying, treat them like a human let being. Let me correct treat your them with position dignity. on now. Our position is to keep abortion legal. Uh, through all nine months of pregnancy, our, is that correct? Our position is to keep abortion legal. A very good indicator as to whether somebody holds a strong moral position is whether or not they can articulate their position and then stand on that hill unashamedly. If you're debating somebody and they're trying to dance around their position and not outwardly state it and don't want to say what their organization really stands for, that is a red flag. She stands for abortion until the moment of birth. I know how I feel about that. I've done my research into what that sort of abortion looks like. And I can tell you without a glimmer of hesitancy that it is wrong. So why can't she? Well, it's obvious because she clearly bears a strong level of uncertainty about the ethics of her position. And her moral compass tells her that it's not an appropriate thing to say out loud and outwardly, yet she campaigns for it. So with that, guys, I'm looking forward to reading your comments on this one. It's a hot topic, I know, but I don't avoid the hot topics here at Rattlesnake TV. And if you guys want to find me anywhere else, Twitter, Instagram, I'm quite the social media sort of guy these days. Other channels, Spotify, and all that good stuff, hit that link, top of the comments and in the bio. And if you guys want to watch another video, click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.